Good morning, Rose Red community, and welcome to another Micro Moment Monday. We are getting lots of new subscribers, and for those of you that are new, welcome. We're so thrilled to have you join our community. And if you're not quite sure what Micro Moment Mondays are, I started these months ago as just for a little quickie lesson on something having to do with self-reliance, emergency preparedness, or food security. And they're intended for just quickie lessons for you to work into your own plans for preparing for an uncertain future, since it looks more and more like we're headed in that direction. Um, I want to just remind you that we have two classes up going right now, water bath canning and um, water bath canning basics and pressure canning step by step. Those are available at our bookstore. And next week, toward the end of the week on the 24th, this book, 40 Plus Recipes Using Food Storage Ingredients by My Three Sisters and Me, will be going on sale for 20% off for a whole week. So those are just things for you to be aware of. Today, we're going to do a little quick lesson on just ascertaining whether or not we are measuring flour accurately. Um, most of you know that I'm working on a bread book, which has been a lot on my mind because I mention it a lot on our videos as well. This is the stack of books um, and some along with some others that I have been um, working with and learning a whole lot myself and accepting some things and rejecting a whole lot of things because they're too complex to go into our book. Our bread book is going to be simple, practical approach to making bread um, aimed at such a time as if we are needing to bake bread for our family for survival. We also want there to be some enjoyment with that and then um, off-grid baking of bread as well. So one of the things that I ran into was, and I had never realized it before I started doing research for this book, um, was measuring flour. Now, I have never given a second thought to measuring flour. I put it in a cup, I put it in my recipe, and there it is. And then a number of years ago, when I became interested in artisan bread, I learned how important it was to um, measure flour by weight instead of by volume. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What do I mean, weight or volume? Well, volume is a cup, and weight is in the United States with our imperial or standard measurement, weight for ingredients would maybe in ounces. But the metric system, which I think is far better than our own system because it is based on tens and is easily divided and multiplied, um, that is, uses grams for recipes and not ounces. Um, and so I thought, oh, okay, I'll start measuring my flour by weight then instead of by volume. And I started to get results that were far superior to when I was just measuring um, using cups. So that was great. I did that for, gosh, over a decade. And then came this book and all of these experts in the field. And you would think that there is a standardized number of grams per cup of flour. Because if you bake a lot, you may notice that more and more these days in recipes that call for flour in any kind of baking, it gives a gram weight and then it also gives a volume in cups. And so you would think that that is standardized across I mean, it's a measurement, for goodness sake. Shouldn't we all be on the same page with the measurement? Well, we're not. And that really surprised me. So I thought I would bring this to you um, as um, an idea for you to test yourself to see if you are measuring flour accurately. Every single one of these experts gives a different gram measurement for a volume of one cup of flour. And they range from 120 grams to 154, no, 156 grams. That is a difference of 36 grams, which is about a fourth of a cup of flour. And so if we are trusting the recipes that we are looking at, and it says so many grams or so many cups, and we're using cups, we may not be measuring accurately. So I want to show you today what I mean by all of this. Now, first of all, 
Um, Almost all recipes give the, the cup measurement or the gram measurement. This America's Test Kitchen book uses ounces, and I think that they do that because they are America's Test Kitchen, and they think that most people in America would use ounces. It confuses the heck out of me because ounces are not a precise measurement. There are between 25 and 28 grams per ounce. And when we are measuring ingredients for a recipe, we want to be as precise as possible. And precision, in this case, depends on the units that we are using. The smaller the unit, the more precise we can be. So if ounces are like this and grams are like this, I will choose grams any day of the week over ounces because I can be more precise with a smaller measurement unit. So I'm going to set these books over here. And we're going to bring up our King Arthur flour. Now, this is just all-purpose unbleached uh, flour, white flour. This is what I use. That's what is in this bin. And so what's very interesting is on the King Arthur website, all of the recipes that they um, have up there use 120 grams of flour per cup. Well, 120 grams, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have, I have a new kitchen scale right here, and, and um, it, I like it because it's low and flat, and I can put bowls on the top of it very easily. Um, my other one still works, but I've had so many requests for, um, I've got a wild hair. I have so many requests for what is the brand of your kitchen scale? Well, it is older, so old that the brand name has worn off and I don't know. So now I can tell you that the scale that I am using is an Intexity and it is on our Amazon store and it's $13. I am now advocating that every one of us needs to have a kitchen scale in our kitchen if we're going to be doing bread with any degree of accuracy. So here's what I'm talking about. So this is my bin of flour. I go through flour really fast, especially now that I'm testing bread recipes every day of the week. Mm -hmm. So my flour sits in this bin. Gravity, of course, is pulling down on it all the time. So how do I measure flour? Well, I'm going to turn my scale on. And I just usually dip in. And then either with my finger or with the back of a knife, I just brush it off like this. So how much do we think this weighs. Is this cup the same as the cup of flour that you would measure in your house? The answer is probably not. So let's take a look. So what does that say? I can't read it. 147. Okay, so that's 147 grams. That is a far cry from what King Arthur gives as their measurement. And it is also kind of in the middle between all of these experts, ranging from 120 to 156 grams. Mine is 147. Now, King Arthur says, okay, now I'm going to zero this out. Yeah, you gotta zero it up, because it just said 299. Does it zero now? It says zero. Okay, so King Arthur, and some people fluff up their flour like this, get oxygen in it. And then if you measure a cup, now King Arthur says, gently spoon the flour into the cup. So here we go, we are gently spooning. Over the top, and then whisk off any over, and let's see what we have now. What does that say? It says 131. That is about as close as I can come to what King Arthur says a cup of flour is in grams. I've never been able to get it down to 120. But I'll tell you, when I follow their recipes, I don't look at how many cups for this very reason, because when I measure cups, getting it as light and airy as I can and spooning it into the cup, I am not anywhere near 120, which is what they call for. So I always measure out my flour 
by the gram weight, not ever by volume. All right, now, another way that I have seen people do flour is to just scoop it in, take a knife and go like this to be sure all holes are filled, then swipe it off, and now what do we have? 150. All right, so that's even more gram weight than when I did it with, with fluffing it up and not doing the hitting of it. So in my book, I, I decided to go through these and see what they said was the right one. And um, then I just did it my own way, which is, and I'm gonna do it for you again. So when I measure flour, I fluff it up a little bit and then I just dip in, swipe across, and then pour it into whatever. So what is that? 139. All right, so I did this 25 times. And my average gram weight of flour, of a cup of flour, is 144 grams. Well, I was pretty excited because this book also uses 144 grams. This is Ken Forkish, and I devoured this book about five years ago in his, um, his Artisan Bread. So in the bread book that I am putting together, I tell you the gram measurement using 144 grams as the basis. And then I put the total weight of the flour in grams with the cups in parentheses. But my strong recommendation is for you to not pay any attention to the cups, but rather pay attention to the gram weight and get a scale that will measure ounces and grams because that will help you a lot. And then what would be fun for you to do is to compare how you measure flour and how much it weighs, a cup of flour weighs the way you measure it compared to me or compared to um, uh, King Arthur so that you will know that when King Arthur says 120 grams or one cup, you don't just go in and get a cup of flour the way you measure it or the way I measure it, but rather we weigh it out for accuracy. One more thing is that I do a lot of milling of grain into fresh flour. So wheat flour and barley flour, and um, I just did some quinoa flour. And so when it goes through my grain mill, it gets a lot of air in it. And so that is another reason why measuring by weight is so important, because using just the volume would not give the same amount of flour as if you did it by weight. So here's hoping that all of us can be a little bit more accurate in how we measure flour when we are baking. And I bet that all of us that need to tweak our measuring just a little bit will start seeing better results as we are baking. So I hope that this was useful information for you and we will see you very soon with more videos on flour. Coming up will be our 10 grain power flour. So see you soon.